Welcome to a very long overdue pixel moment video. Uh, I guess this is just, I guess kind of a channel update and a life update. You know, apologies that I just haven't been able to think of a video to create for over a month. It's like, I'm just, I've been hitting some kind of a creative block. It's not that I haven't been doing photography and practicing, you know, some daily photo challenges, but you know, not all of them I was happy with. Some turned out pretty good, and people seemed to like it, but... Whew! Oh, what's been going on? I mean, holidays, Christmas is great. Happy, uh, merry belated Christmas, and happy belated New Year. And then the beginning of January, at least here in the U.S., whew! That's something else, but not gonna get political here. However, I... I will say I was just God, it pissed me off when I saw the videos that uh, Jared Poland uh, made a video of uh, showcasing some videos that the press were taking, and just those morons and assholes just destroying all this equipment for no reason. Really, that ugh, that got to me a little. So, pretty much right after Christmas, from you know, full of holiday cheer and all that. I guess it's around New Year's that I just go into a, whoom, a slump of depression and just a rut creatively and, you know, just personal issues, family issues and all that. And I, at the beginning of December, uh, <laughs> I did get T-boned, so, you know, I'm okay. And the anxiety from, you know, the job I went back to for the fall semester and now I can't go back to that job. I'm essentially out of one of my jobs until after spring break. So while that $600 did help, uh, really hope that we get that $1,400 check. Because uh, <laughs> some of us really need that to live. That being said, what I wanted to save up for, I've been doing... I've been spending my time trying to do research and plan for the future financially. What equipment to get next, what to prioritize. And maybe if you're reeling from a holiday buying, maybe this will help somebody out there. I don't know. I did want to go ahead and invest in a drone. And I was you know, looking at a couple out there. And I think while the Mini looked pretty good, it just felt a tiny bit lacking in some aspects. So I think whenever I have the means to do so, I'm probably going to go with the Mavic Air 2 or maybe wait for the price to come down a little more whenever, hopefully this year, they announce the Air 3 or something. But one of my Christmas presents that I got, I thought y'all might like this, one of these tiny little drones for ages three and up and the funny thing is this thing kind of has obstacle detection it knows when it's about to hit somebody or a wall something and the mini doesn't even have that <laughs> and that's a lot more expensive like, come on dji I'm not trying to shoot myself in the foot here but this thing is cheap and it has it a kid a kid so even though I'm still saving up for a drone, probably the Mavic Air 2, I am currently studying to get my drone license. So that should help with real estate and maybe some other things. So, so there's that as far as drones are concerned. As far as audio, I'm still pretty happy with the, the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. Da -da 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 -da. You know, I'm not opposed to one getting something else that I can attach um, like my Blue Yeti Pro XLR input into to maybe get more of a cleaner and richer sound, at least in the bass, because I'm, you know, I have a lovely baritone voice. Thinking of the H5N for myself, the H4N is pretty good. I've just been trying to do research as much as I can on what that, the 6N I don't really need. The 8, 
H8. Oh, no. It's overkill. I don't do podcasting. I don't have a whole lot of microphones. I just think I could probably do a little better, not only for recording vlogs, but other audio that I may need for more, you know, short film type work. The more I thought about it over the month and trying to prioritize what to look forward to next, but I wanted to stick to a goal that I'm trying to set for myself. Make videos look a little bit more professional and if they start out as sort of like a short film type, you know, walking around or just panning on things, looking at scenery, might look a little more interesting. I don't know if, you know, if you liked some of the previous videos that I tried that in, you know, leave a comment down below or hit the like button on it, which I, I think you should do anyway, hit the little thumbs up and subscribe for more. This is not <laughs> going to be a constant thing, I hope. This is just an update from where I've been. Now, as far as uh, cameras are concerned, well, probably I've said this before, was it a year ago now, last summer or something, or the summer beforehand, what I was looking for in, in a new camera. And the more I looked at the R6, okay, the eye autofocus uh, would be pretty good for what I would need for portrait shots and doing more theater work and low light because the R6 is supposedly really good in low light and focus has been kind of a, it's become kind of a priority need for me because I'm noticing, you know, my Canon 80D, while it's still very good, the focusing, especially getting really you know sharp focus on on people's faces or even animals' faces, or whatever. So I thought it could be better, especially if I'm going to try to get more uh, professional work in the future and make more money from that. It's like I need to I need to step it up a bit. And also to go along with that, I did go ahead and I bought Luminar AI. I already have Luminar 4, and I bought Luminar AI. And maybe in another video, I'll be able to show you uh, some of my experiences on this. I got the, was it the OBS software, I think. <laughs> I need to test that out. I still haven't done that yet. So I think I'm going to try to make another video in itself about, you know, my experience with Luminar AI. I think it's, you know, it's got its pluses and minuses. The pluses are when doing uh, portrait work and people's faces and cleaning that up. Oh boy, that saves time and workflow and just makes, you know, a couple of clicks here what I most likely would have done on my own manually with all the sliders. And I've compared it before, like, click this little button on somebody that I already made one, you know, creative photo of, and it's like, it came out almost the same. So like, oh, okay then. <laughs> So, and it's the same with, with anything, like presets for Lightroom or something. It's like, it's a good starting point, and then you can just fine tune it there. And I think the same is true with Luminar AI. My only frustration with it so far, and it's been kind of a big frustration, if I'm clicking and sliding buttons really fast and I want to go back, hit Control-Z on the keyboard, sometimes it will just completely delete the background sky or whatever I've put in behind the subject even though it says it's still there visually it's not and I so I think there's still some kinks they need to work out but that's just my experience do I think it's worth getting uh, if you do portrait work oh yeah <laughs> I would definitely say it's it's worth it for landscapes mm, that's up to you I personally some bits here and there in their templates I kind of like, but I end up tweaking so much of it anyway. So maybe that's just my OCD or perfectionism on that. I don't know. So that's my hot take on that. So again, because of the state of things and all that pandemic, you know, work is kind of hard to come by. So reviewing gear is not really what this channel is primarily about. I am so thankful for all the the likes and the views that the the filter the indie filter that i made last year just shooting way up i'm like whoa did not expect that so i guess i did good <laughs> so far for this channel i think there's only been what two troll comments maybe three I'm like 
It's like, I don't have scripts for these videos. <laughs> it's like, yes, I do theater. If I had a script, boom, I'd memorize the lines. It'd be easy. I could do a character. It's what I do. I'm an actor, first and foremost. <laughs> Life is kind of, woo, all over the place right now. I'm sure for a lot of people. For me, it's prioritizing what I can invest in next and how long I need to wait. So this is just kind of a life update and a little channel update. I'm not going I'm I'm trying to think of other videos to make. It's just I can't make them about equipment because I've already made videos about the equipment I have. Speaking of which, I'll start teasing it. But first I will say, you know, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And please hit the like and subscribe button for more. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. It's just trying to get the creative juices flowing. <laughs> Not easy right now, especially in January. So y'all be excellent. And I'll see you in the next one. Ooh, we got a Marvel teaser here for maybe the next video. <gasps> Wait a minute, that said R on the box. Is he teasing R5 or the R6? I don't know. It can't be the R itself. He didn't want that one. I know, but he kept talking about the R6. Is that the R6? I don't know. I guess we're just going to have to wait for the next video.